Hey guys, Adam Caesar here. Welcome to another episode of Project Black T-Shirt. Today we're going to be talking about uh, Marcin Rona's Polish film, brand new film, uh, called Demon. I want to start out by kind of asking a question. Um, and it's something that I see in uh, comment threads and IND message board posts and uh, other places where people talk and sometimes um, very undelicately argue about uh, horror movies. You'll see someone uh, talking about a movie, a movie that has uh, great critical acclaim, and then there'll always be that one person in the comments that chimes, that's not a horror film. Demon is a movie that kind of asks that question, um, what constitutes a horror film? How far can you take something um, into the into non-genre waters um, until it becomes uh, not considered a genre picture anymore, at least by uh, dudes like me on the internet. Demon, Polish film, uh, concerns a London-born, uh, Israeli dude, uh, who's moving to Poland, uh, going to this remoter part of Poland that he can only get there by, uh, boat, and he's, uh, meeting this girl that he's, um, had a kind of whirlwind romance with, uh, was introduced to her by her brother, marrying this girl, meeting the family for the first time, he's only really talked to them, uh, through correspondence and over the phone and stuff like that. Um, so he's marrying this girl, and most of the movie takes place um, right on this uh, right on this one night, right on the, the kind of wedding night. Um, as I said, they're having the wedding in this remote location. Um, it's an old family uh, house, old family farmhouse kind of thing. It's got a barn out back. Um, it really needs work. It's got a it's got a real like haunted house, uh, you know, Eastern European kind of haunted house vibe to it. Peter, our main character, stays there one night. Um, has some kind of supernatural encounter with, is kind of a changed man, a little bit possessed. Um, and then we have what is almost your, your kind of classic ghost story, possession story, um, with shades of Jewish folklore because they do discuss it as a, like, debuck, the, uh, the ghost that attaches itself to Peter. And that meets up with what is... Basically a, a kind of like foreign comedy, one crazy wedding night from hell plot. As we were leaving the theater, I described this to my girlfriend. I was like, wow, it's like a, it's like Tony and Tina's wedding uh, if Tony uh, got possessed. And for those of you who don't know, Tony and Tina's wedding is like this uh, kind of like really hokey, um, somewhat racist if you're Italian, um, <laughs> um, Per, uh, audience participation show where you go to a wedding of these characters and they're all their different colorful family are all around you and you eat dinner with them and stuff like that. Um, and that's what this movie felt like to me. Could have aired either way. Could have aired into goofball comedy. Could have aired into abject uh, drama. But we have this kind of ghost and possession story at the center um, that is coloring our perception of everything else and making this like, kind of like a, a really dark, really heavy movie. I don't mean to make it sound like a goofy movie because it's definitely not. Um, but that's the kind of story we're working with here. We have uh, the long-winded um, relative who's a professor. Um, we have the family uh, doctor who's like, uh, you know, 12 years sober, but is like drinking every chance he gets. Um, we have, uh, you know, the, the imposing father-in-law. We have the messed up brother-in-law. We have all these kind of um, stock characters and they're all, they all feel very, I'm not a, an expert in Polish culture, but they all feel very Polish and there are a lot of ideas in this movie that feel, if you are Polish or if you are a Polish audience, you're going to kind of probably get more out of it. It is a very traditional Polish wedding and our main character, Peter, coming in, um, being this kind of uh, Jewish guy, uh, like doesn't know all the customs. He doesn't even really know the language that, that well. He, he lapses into English. This is a subtitle movie. It is predominantly in Pol Polish. But Peter, our main character, doesn't speak Polish super well. Um, he also, like, doesn't know the customs. Like, he doesn't know how you're supposed to break the glass in, Pol in Polish culture at a wedding. So there's all these layers of um, political and social and all these different illusions that we're getting. There's a lot of characters digging up things, unearthing secrets, a lot of visual thematics at work. It is, this is a, a real deal, holy field um, motion picture with a capital... M and a real film with a capital F. Um, this is about as about as far from like a crappy VOD horror movie, something I'd normally watch um, at a, on my couch by myself, uh, as as you can get, and as I could get away with uh, review, making a review for uh, for this uh, for this YouTube channel. But that said, I really love this film, uh, Demon. If you have a chance to go see it, if you have an art house near you that's playing it, uh, I cannot recommend enough uh, that you go check this out. 
it, it's sad, it's funny, it's relatable, it's freaking creepy at some points. It's not a it's not a jump scare laden movie. Um, if you want something like that, uh, Blair Witch was the last movie I reviewed. Go check that out because that's jump scare a minute. This is not a movie that's interested at all in kind of the art of the scare. Um, all the images, all the upset, uh, all the kind of unsettling moments in this movie are played very quietly, um, played very quietly and very subtly. Uh, so much so that you like you'll come out of the theater. Uh, debating with whoever you saw it with like well was this part like meant to be supernatural or was this not meant to be supernatural is this just a weird thing that happens at a wedding um and i think that is a part of the charm of the movie where it almost feels like a nightmare where weird things are happening and, and out of the ordinary things are happening but i think the the idea would be yes this is an out of the ordinary day um it's not every day that there's you have a celebration like this it's not every day that everyone's drinking this much it's, there's not every day that everyone's partying like this that everyone has these you know their hormones are going like this it's in that sense it's it's it's, it's a great horror film because the natural order is upset everything about this you know about this this wedding that is like i said the bulk of the movie seems a little bit off seems a little bit messed up uh, not just for the like schedule and timetable that the um, that the characters are trying to adhere to, but messed up in a like cosmic sense, um, in a like in a ghost story sense where we've we've upset this spirit. We don't know what the spirit wants. We don't even know if it is like really the spirit that it's saying it is, um, and everything's in in upheaval. It's a great movie. Um, definitely a movie if you're um, one of those people that doesn't like. Um, and I hate this term. I hate the term art horror as if artfully done horror is somehow more valid or somehow puts itself into a completely different subgenre, because this is not in a different subgenre. It's a ghost story, it's a possession story, but um, it's in the lightest of ways. Um, but art horror is this, this idea of like things like The Witch and Babadook. Just all these movies that have come out recently that are very artfully made uh, horror movies that maybe um, are difficult for mainstream audiences or like or, or mess with mainstream audiences in some way or upend their the you know the sensibilities of what is a horror film in some way uh but i don't i don't believe those movies all have that much to do with each other especially if you throw demon in the mix so i wouldn't call this an art horror movie just because i don't use those terms but um if you're someone who uses those terms you're definitely going to use uh art horror to describe uh demon because it is, it is a very light uh film um in scares but it is very heavy and deep film and something you're going to think about for a while after you're done seeing it that rambling out of the way uh, Marcin Rona's Demon in theaters now, hopefully rentable pretty soon. I wanted to talk about another traditional ghost story for our book recommendation. Today's book recommendation is Ronald Malfi's Little Girls. Now, if you're into kind of traditional ghost stories, uh, traditional haunted house stories, um, you're going to love this. It is a modern book. It is just came out a few years ago, um, but it is traditional in the best part, best sense of the word. I don't mean boring, I don't mean predictable, I mean will remind you of, you know, great ghost stories you read in the past, like The Haunting of Hill House. And the plot involves a family uh, moving back to uh, the uh, the protagonist, uh, she's a mother of one, um, moving back to her kind of uh, childhood home and un uncovering the secrets there and the uh, little girl that she used to play with um, when she was going through kind of a, duff, a difficult childhood, coming back, having more difficulties in her life, and having her own little girl kind of having a new friend who's a lot like the old friend. Um, don't want to spoil it any more than that. It is, um, if you like creepy kids, if you like um, creepy kid ghosts, if you like just ghost stories in general, you're going to like uh, Ronald Malfi's Little Girls. Um, really beautiful prose. I like the way Malfi writes. Um, and very kind of traditionally creepy. So, enjoy that. All right, that was Demon and Ronald Malfi's Little Girls. Demon's in the theaters now. I saw it at the Ritz in Philadelphia. I'm not sure how long it's gonna be there. I'm not sure where it is around you, so check your local listings um, and uh, keep your eyes peeled on Amazon, I guess, if it's gonna come out soon to be rentable. If you like this video, please hit like. Uh, if you like ghost stories, if you like uh, films uh, about ghosts and possessions, please tell me some of your favorites in the comments because I feel like I'm a little bit underseen in this genre. Um, if you like uh, ghost books, tell me your favorite books in the comments. Just comment. Just say something. All right. Have a great day, guys. See you next week.